Uh, cat versus dog, snake versus mongoose, sheep versus horse. Some of nature's legendary battles. Wait a minute, are we sure about that last one? Well, in this video, we're going to show you that it's more true than you might think. In fact, there are a lot of animals which are pitched in a lifelong struggle against their very worst enemy. From the hay-eating psychopaths to the underwater monster, here's 20 animals that eat each other. <sighs> Number 20. A horse biting and pulling the poor sheep into the air. Sheep are occasionally killed by horses, particularly stallions, who appear to view the sheep as toys. Many people in New Zealand, where there are many sheep, are hesitant to put a stallion in with them since it is a known hazard. Horses and sheep in general get along well once they've had some time to get to know one another. Horses are fight or flight animals. And if a sheep is introduced too soon, it may be perceived as a threat and attacked. This is why sheep hate horses. Many horse and sheep owners say that if introduced properly, they get along swimmingly. Before you buy a horse and a flock of sheep and throw them in your apartment together, be sure you understand their unique health and care needs, as well as some extra safety considerations regarding keeping horses and sheep together. If you want to purchase a sheep to keep as a buddy for your horse, you'll need to make sure you have enough fence to keep them contained. Because the size disparity between horses and sheep, a fence that keeps horses confined may not be enough to keep sheep contained. If you know horses, you're undoubtedly aware of how simple it is to terrify them. Plastic bags, strange shadows, or strange sounds might all be enough to startle them. After you've successfully coupled your horse and sheep in an open area, keep an eye on them for the next several weeks to make sure there are aren't any problems. If you're giving your sheep or horse vitamins or grains, keep them apart from each other to avoid conflicts. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Crayfish versus Scorpion. Here's a crazy battle that would probably never happen in nature, crayfish versus scorpion. These two were ancient relatives, but evolution has set them on very different paths. Seems like the scorpion is a lot more chill than his big red friend. How about that worm? Is he the referee, or just very brave to be walking around between all those claws? The noble crayfish, also known as the broad-fingered crayfish, is Europe's most numerous crayfish species and a traditional food source. It is a freshwater species, only found in clear streams, rivers, and lakes. It may be found throughout Central Europe from France to the Balkan Peninsula, as well as the British Isles, Scandinavia, Finland, and Eastern Europe. European crayfish consume worms, aquatic insects, mollusks, and plants, among other things. They spend all day in their burrows and are nocturnal. The crayfish achieve sexual maturity after three to four years after a series of molts, and breeds in October and November. The fertilized eggs are retained by the female and attached to her pleopods until they hatch and disperse the following year in May. As juveniles and adults, European mink, eels, perch, pike, Eurasian otters, and muskrats are the principal predators of the noble crayfish. This species was once abundant throughout Europe, but difficult to find in restaurants and was thought to be the most delicious crayfish. Number 18. Shark versus Dolphin Who do you contact if you're in the middle of nowhere and a shark is after you? 
If there are any dolphins in the vicinity, make a call to them. There have been several reported instances of dolphins rescuing humans from shark attacks. The dolphins generally encircle and assist the person in danger to safety, while simultaneously keeping the shark at bay. There is protection in numbers in such situations, but an individual dolphin will fight a shark that threatens its pod or its young. When it comes to sharks versus dolphins, it's generally a battle of quickness versus brutality. Sharks have a vulnerable spot despite their supposedly impenetrable shell, and fast-swimming dolphins know how to take advantage of it. The fact that sharks are cold-blooded fish is perhaps the most significant distinction between them and dolphins. Dolphins are warm-blooded animals, not cold-blooded. Dolphins are cetaceans like whales and porpoises, and they must surface to breathe air on a regular basis. Dolphins' horizontal flukes which enable them vertical movement, may have developed for this purpose. Sharks, on the other hand, absorb oxygen from salt water via their gills, avoiding the need to surface. They have vertical flukes which allow them more horizontal movement, but limited vertical movement. This distinction has a significant bearing. A dolphin's bony backbone allows it to swim circles around a shark for greater agility. Number 17. Peacock vs. Snake Fight is it true that peacocks eat snakes? Snakes are eaten by peacocks. The crawling reptiles upset them tremendously. As a result, they will attack anyone who enters their domain. When a peacock tries to hurt a snake, it usually grabs its neck and shakes it forcefully until it dies. The peacock may opt to swallow the snake once it has been killed. Ophiophagy is the practice of eating snakes. Peacocks, therefore, are ophiophagous birds. Snakes are kept at bay by peacocks. They simply do not want any snakes in their area. So if one shows up, they'll deal with it appropriately. The Rajas of ancient India kept peacocks in their palaces. This was their method of defending against and dispatching cobras. In fact, the Indian name for peacocks, Mayura, which means snake slayer, encapsulates their snake-repelling abilities. Venomous snakes are eaten by peacocks. As previously said, Rahas raised them to fend off and kill cobras. Cobras, of course, are deadly. However, peacocks do not appear to be affected by the venom of these snakes when they consume them. Rattlesnakes can be eaten by peacocks despite the fact that rattlesnakes are poisonous. Peacocks should easily eat them. The peacock, on the other hand, may be harmed if the rattlesnake is infected with germs, parasites, or viruses. Number 16. Scorpion vs. Tarantula Spider Scorpions and tarantulas are two ancient arachnids that have been roaming the Earth for hundreds of millions of years, long before dinosaurs existed. And the debate about who would win in a fight has spawned a slew of YouTube videos, internet forums, and even academic studies. With over 900 kinds of tarantulas and 2,500 types of scorpions found across the world, the winner is determined by who is in the ring. The answer is based on three factors strength, mobility, and venom. In the wild, scorpions and tarantulas seldom come into contact, but when they do, they want to fight to defend their turf or themselves. Since they have been known, to try to eat one another. The fight appears to be fairly balanced at first look. Ambush predators such as scorpions and tarantulas sit and wait for their victim. Both of them are healthily armed. Scorpions are predatory arachnids that belong to the order Scorpions. They feature eight legs and a pair of grasping pincers on their backs, as well as a slender, segmented tail that bends forward over the back and invariably terminates in a stinger. Scorpion develops development may be dated back 435 million years. They thrive in deserts, but have adapted to a wide range of environmental conditions and may be found on every continent except Antarctica. Number 15. Crocodile vs. Hippo if these two creatures despise one another, they have a particular way of expressing it. You'd think that an A1 apex predator like a large crocodile would be delighted to have a wallowing, fat-covered plant eater living in the water right next to it, but this plant-eating water wallower 
is a hippo, and hippos are, uh, well, let's just say that no one bothers the hippo. Crocs will occasionally risk their lives by attempting to take on a hippo calf, but even this can all. Hippos are not just aggressive, but a full-grown hippopotamus is difficult to fend off. Their four massive saber-like fangs can put 450 pounds of pressure on a croc's body. Plus, its mouth is massive and it could easily bite a man in two, something they do frequently, killing 500 people each year. The hippo's skin is roughly three inches thick and functions as armor plating if the croc manages to bite it. So these two semi-aquatic creatures have reached an everlasting truce, with neither of them disturbing the other too much. Hippos don't eat croc flesh, and crocs, eh, well, they simply just don't go there. Number 14. Cat vs. Dogs For as long as we can remember, these two legendary foes have been our best pals. However, this does not imply that they always get along. But who would triumph in the end? Cats, of course, have a competitive advantage in terms of speed, claws, and agility. The difficulty is that a regular dog, if it genuinely wants to kill the cat, can bite it quickly enough. We've now arrived to the dog's major advantage. It has a characteristic that cats don't have. With a single bite, its huge, strong mouth may destroy anything in its path. Cats and dogs rarely fight. Cats either flee or get aggressive in an attempt to scare the dog away. They are well aware that they may die at any moment. In contrast to dogs, cats experience fear in the same manner as high school bullies do. A cat will hiss to warn a dog away if it sees the dog is scared of them. Cats will hunt mice, small birds, and smaller rodents. On the other side, a dog was seen hunting down a wild hog. Though it was not a fully mature animal, that's still a big difference. Some dogs, such as the Sarplaninac, a Siberian breed named after the Sar Mountain, are famed for their ability to fight a wolf and win every time. So if a dog can defeat a wolf, I believe it's safe to assume that the typical domestic cat would have no chance against a dog in a genuine battle. Number 13. Lion vs. Hyena the ranges of hyenas and lions share a lot of territory. When conflicts arise, the hyenas usually have the upper hand, since they have their pack to rely on. With a heart twice the size of a lion's, amazing stamina, jaw pressure exceeding 1,000 psi, and intelligence equivalent to primates, hyenas are more than capable of fighting off and holding their own against lions. When it comes to scavenging, lions are very similar to hyenas. Following hyena screams, lions are known to just push the much smaller hyenas around with their massive bulk. That's why as pack predators, hyenas take advantage of their numbers. According to Hans Crooks' research, spotted hyena, social behavior, and predation, eight hyenas killed a fully grown male lion. During the Pleistocene epoch, hyenas were known to kill lions and bring their bones back to their dens. Several of the lion bones had also been eaten by spotted hyenas. Parts of lion heads have been broken off, lower jaws have been shattered in a consistent way, and limb bones have been eaten, all of which match hyenas' distinctive body deconstruction capabilities. When it came to devouring lions, the feeding hyenas did nothing out of the ordinary. The pattern of devastation on the lion's bones is similar to that scene on a horse, rhinoceros, and elephant bones, suggesting that the hyenas went about their business as normal. No lion is happy to see a bunch of hyenas show up. Remember the Lion King? Number 12. Ants vs. Butterfly Researchers have discovered that butterflies that deceive ants into helping them mature their larvae are causing an evolutionary arms race between the two species. According to them, the finding is critical for the protection of endangered Alcon blue butterflies by hatching caterpillars near Myrmica ant nests. Maculinia Alcon butterflies infect Myrmica ant nests, expecting that the caterpillars would be adopted and cared for by the ants who mistake them for their own offspring. 
The caterpillars do this by imitating the ant's surface chemistry. According to David Nash, a biologist at the University of Copenhagen in Denmark, if an ant does not identify a caterpillar as one of its own, the ant will devour it. Caterpillars that are successfully adopted are detrimental for ant colonies because ants may ignore their own young in favor of the intruders. The ants, on the other hand, are fighting back. Nash and his colleagues observed the continuing battle at various locations in Denmark, where caterpillars penetrate the nests of two different ant species, Myrmica rubra and Myrmica ruginotis. They examined areas where caterpillars were present, as well as those where they were not. If a butterfly has developed to particularly attack a local ant's nest, it may be chemically distinct enough to be identified as a forgery by ants in other places. Number 11. Bees vs. Hornet you may have noticed that hornets have recently been in the headlines. Before the pandemic came along and altered everything, it looked like the world was about to collapse because of Asian giant hornets. The hornets, on the other hand, haven't quit just because everybody's been trapped inside for two years. This invading species has continued on its destructive course, but bees, not people, are the ones who have the most to fear. These hornets like hunting for honeybees and are quite skilled at it. In reality, they create raiding parties and rush into bee nests, ripping the heads off of all the guard bees and leaving a mound of bee corpses at the entrance, before killing all of the ordinary bees and ferrying them back to the hornet's nest for nourishment. Can you imagine the recent talks at Honeybee HQ? Knowing that these super hornets are chewing up and spitting out even their elite guard of bees, Back in Asia, bees have devised a brilliant technique for fighting hornets by utilizing their greater numbers. A hornet raider will be swarmed by bees who will pile more and more bees into a ball. They'll all vibrate at the same time, creating enough heat to roast the hornet alive. Glorious justice. However, American bees are in for a tough ride until they acquire this type of tactical reaction. Number 10. Meerkat vs. Drongo Bird Tom Flower of the University of Cambridge has discovered that fork-tailed drongos may mislead meerkats into fleeing for shelter by emitting false alarm cries. According to a new research published today, it's the hawk crying bird. Drongos are masters at seizing opportunities. The fork-tailed species will follow meerkats as they forage, digging up or flushing out beak-sized morsels, and even snatching food off the meerkats themselves. They're also great mimics according to some studies, and can correctly replicate the sounds of other animals. Flower was curious to see if they used these deception techniques on the meerkats they were following. He spent 11 months in the Kalahari Desert of South Africa, following a wild group of 50 fork-tailed drongos who had each been given a different colored ring. The magnitude of the drongo's theft was exposed through Flower's observations. They spent around 1% of their time tracking meerkats and a quarter of their time tracking the pied babbler, a tiny bird. Around a quarter of their total calories came from the food they took from these animals. Number 9. Emu vs. Kangaroo at an animal refuge in Australia, a funny encounter between a bunch of emus and a kangaroo was captured on video. The lone kangaroo, who appears to be minding his own business, is encircled by the three emus until they notice the pile of lush branches on offer. They close up on the ravenous marsupial, clearly seeking a piece of the roo's feast. The feisty roo, though, packs a punch and squares up to the circling crowd, much to the astonishment of the enveloping group. The woman shooting the video encourages the root to hit him, punch him, Kangi, you can do it. Punch him, punch him, Kanga, you can do it. But the emus flee in terror at the sight of the bouncing marsupial. They face the kangaroo one by one, but to no use, as they realize they are no match for their opponent. After its ratite cousin, the ostrich, the emu is the second largest extant bird in terms of size. It is the biggest native bird and the only living member of the genus Dromaeus, and it is unique to Australia. The Tasmanian, Kangaroo Island, and King Island subspecies of the emu became extinct following European colonization of Australia in 1788. Number 8. Elephant vs. Rhino 
Again, there's a mismatch here, and you get the impression that rhinos despise seeing bull elephants, whereas elephants, well, it appears to depend on their mood. Normally, elephants do not assault rhinos, which is good news for rhinos, because when they do, the result is generally just one thing, a rhinoceros spicy kebab. These occurrences are uncommon, and only occur around watering spots where everyone is a little anxious, as nearly every mega beast in Africa shows up for a drink at the same time, and things may get a little heated, especially if the elephants are with calves. However, in 1994, conservationists in South Africa's Palainsburg Game Reserve discovered a rash of brutal rhino murders that could only have been carried out by large male elephants. They knew who the culprit was, but they needed a reason. Why were elephants suddenly turning on rhinos who were unaware of their presence? They were a long way from any drinking holes. Well, it turns out that these elephants, like people, were becoming delinquent as a result of shattered family origins. Male elephants are normally released into the world by their mothers when they are approximately 15 years old and they form bonds with older males to learn the ways of the world. However, because this was early in the elephant conservation effort, there were not enough males available. As a result, the young bulls went berserk and attacked the unfortunate rhinos. Number 7. Cobra vs. Monitor Lizard the Kruger National Park in South Africa has seen some genuinely exciting encounters. Reptiles, on the other hand, don't usually take center stage in the action. Helen Young, a visitor, noticed an odd-looking creature writhing in the road some distance in front of her while on an early morning game drive in the northern parts of the Kruger Park earlier this year. As she got closer, the shape changed to that of a rock monitor, Varanus albigarius, Varanus albigularis, engaged in combat with a snouted cobra, Naha anulifera. The snouted cobra, one of Africa's biggest cobra species and a nighttime hunter, had already buried its teeth deeply in the lizard's abdomen when Young arrived on the scene. Meanwhile, the rock monitor trudged down the path, reluctant to surrender to its attacker, the effects of the snake's mainly neurotoxic venom laboring its walk. Toads, birds, and their eggs, rodents, lizards, and other snakes, notably puff adders, make up the food of snout cobras. They frequently raid chicken runs in rural regions and may be a nuisance to farmers. Their venom is a lethal mix of neurotoxic and cytotoxic chemicals that cause tissue damage, respiratory failure, and death when administered. Number 6. Mantis vs. Centipede when they're young, mantis consume different aphids, leafhoppers, mosquitoes, caterpillars, and other soft-bodied insects. Larger insects, such as beetles, grasshoppers, crickets, and other nuisance insects, will be eaten later. Some mantises will eat raw meat and insects right off your fingers. A centipede poses little problem. The praying mantis gets its name from the way its front legs fold, as if in profound devotion to some kind of insect god. This may give the idea that this is a peaceful and quiet creature. However, this is far from the truth. This is one tough bug who has no fear. These are carnivorous ambush predators that travel at extraordinary speeds. They have a charismatic appearance, being tall and thin with a long neck, which makes them extremely fascinating. They also have certain unique characteristics that no other species has. They have 3D vision, for example, which no other animal possesses. They're also the only insect that can spin their heads side to side like a pigeon. And the fact that they don't have to move their entire bodies to get a better look at a scenario contributes to their image as incredible predators. They can even use their spiky legs to defend themselves against the bats that feed on them, but the mantis, which is virtually imperceptible amid the leaves, is the worst nightmare for most insects. Imagine being the size of a beetle and witnessing one of these things. Terrifying! Number 5. Killer Whale vs. White Shark the hungry and aggressive great white shark is tough to envision as prey. Is it possible that orcas are overwhelming them and taking their livers? Carcharodon carcharius, 
The great white shark is the most voracious apex predator in temperate marine environments across the world, and it plays a crucial role in ecosystem dynamics. As a result, imagining a great white as prey is tough. Despite this, the bodies of five great white sharks washed up on the shores of South Africa's Western Cape region earlier this year. The two females and three males, ranging in size from 2.7 meters to 4.9 meters, 16 feet, all had holes puncturing the muscle wall between the pectoral fins. The oddest thing was that their livers were gone. The bite marks left behind, as well as verifiable sightings, indicate that orcas, Orsinus orca, were the ones that carried out this particular predation. Although the opening scene from Jaws 2 comes to mind, in which an orca ishes up to the massive bite scars, the truth has shown to be the polar opposite. When these two apex predators are compared, the statistics resemble a game of top trumps. Great White, 6.4 meters. Orca, 9.6 meters. Great White, 2,268 kilograms. Orca, 9,000 kilograms. Burst swim speed, Great White, 45 kilometers per hour. Orca, 48 kilometers per hour. Orcas appear to have the upper hand, at least on paper. Number 4. Snake vs. Alligator Alligators have a well-deserved reputation as one of the most amazing predators on the planet. They've mastered the skill of sitting quietly in a murky lagoon, resembling a random log, then erupting in a massive snapping flash of fangs to annihilate whatever unfortunate creature is drinking at the water's edge. An alligator is not to be taken lightly. No one ever would, except the python. That is, pythons are massive snakes that suffocate their victim by coiling around it and squeezing it to death before devouring it whole. Small animals, or perhaps something a bit larger, such as a goat or a pig, are the most common. The outcome of an alligator versus python struggle is seen in a video that has gone viral on the internet, and it is not for the faint of heart. The footage was taken at the Shark Valley Visitor Center in Florida. Florida's Everglades National Park, and shows the victor of the deadly fight biting down on its defeated opponent. In this scenario, the alligator triumphed against the massive snake, which is capable of devouring humans whole. Other occurrences have proven even more difficult for the snake, such as the occasion when it swallowed half of the croc before it resurrected and tore its way out of the snake's stomach. As you would expect, this ended horribly for both of them. These are two reptiles with very different weaponry that have fought in some of the most bizarre and evenly matched battles in history. Number 3. Secretary Birds vs. Rabbit A hare was not spared by two secretary birds on a hunting trip. The birds, which usually prey on tiny rodents, amphibians, and reptiles, can be seen pursuing and killing the hare in a video uploaded online. The hare is shown attempting to avoid the two ferocious birds, but it is finally caught and killed. Grant Teffler, 38, shot the video while attending guide training at Kichwa Tembo Camp in Kenya's Masai Mara. He called the sighting unusual, adding he had never seen or heard of anything like it since he began guiding in 2004. The secretary bird is a big raptor that prefers to stay on land and is endemic to Africa and may be found in open grasslands and savanna across the sub-Saharan area. The species was first described in 1779 by John Frederick Miller, although it belongs to the Acipitriforms order, which contains many other diurnal birds of prey including kites, hawks, vultures, and harriers. It is classified as a separate family, Sagittaridae. The secretary bird is easily identified as a big bird with an eagle-like body and crane-like legs that allow it to reach a height of up to 1.3 meters. Despite the fact that the secretary bird has a wide range, localized studies show that the overall population is rapidly declining, most likely due to habitat loss. As a result, the International Union for Conservation of Nature has designated the species as endangered. Sudan's and South Africa's coats of arms include the secretary bird. Number 2. Honey Badger vs. Lions is it possible for a honey badger to kill a lion? According to The Independent, honey badgers have been dubbed the most courageous mammal in the world by the Guinness Book of Records, and can even fend off much larger predators such as lions and hyenas. According to the Smithsonian, 
Lions and leopards eat honey badgers, so even though they are super beings, they have a few kinds of enemies. Because the honey badger's skin is so thick, teeth or claws have a hard time penetrating the flesh and causing the honey badger to bleed to death. Honey badgers have thick, rubbery skin, making them virtually resistant to arrows, spears, and damage from strong claws. Honey badgers are notorious for preying on chickens. They are tough to stop because of their power and perseverance. They have been observed ripping heavy board v boards from hen houses or burrowing beneath stone foundations. During these occurrences, surplus killing is widespread, with one incidence resulting in the deaths of 17 Muscovy ducks and 36 hens. Rumors about man-eating badgers developed among the local people during the British occupation of Basra in 2007, including accusations that the creatures were unleashed by British forces, which the British flatly rejected. Number 1. Cobra vs. Mongoose You'd think that living as a cobra, the world's largest venomous snake, and one of the toughest, would be a lot of fun. They may stand as tall as a grown man, move incredibly quickly, and when the iconic hood appears, you know trouble is on the way. However, we've previously seen how the secretary bird can make life tough for these fearsome reptiles, but there's another species that poses an even greater threat to the unfortunate cobra, the mongoose. Mongooses are superb snake hunters, and they chase and kill cobras, evading the deadly fangs with their incredible agility. They also contain a substance in their blood that lowers the strength of cobra venom, so they are typically unharmed if they are accidentally bitten. The mongoose also has amazing stamina, which means they will battle long after the cobra has exhausted itself and is ready for a meal and a nap. Mongooses win more than 80% of their battles with these massive snakes, which is rather amazing for such a little creature. Who's your worst enemy? Which of these animal battles would you like to see in real life? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!